Hi folks, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV, and we're almost at Thanksgiving, that time when people get together with family and friends and celebrate a holiday that is deep within the American heritage. But unfortunately, that holiday has been mythologized by many government school teachers. So why not take this opportunity to go through the real facts about Thanksgiving and learn something important? that the first Thanksgiving was celebrated not to thank the Indians for helping the pilgrims, but in fact it was celebrated to thank God for giving the pilgrims the opportunity to change their course towards private property and prosperity away from communism. Hi everyone, well it's a big day in America and I hope you're going to be enjoying it with family and friends. I've got some information that perhaps you might want to share with them, a nice historical item for you. And it's all about the tradition of Thanksgiving, where it comes from. In fact, the real story of the Pilgrims starts in the 1600s when a group of Calvinists in England decided that they wanted to flee England and move to Holland to be living in a more free atmosphere for religion. In fact, at the time, England was torn asunder by battles between the Anglican Protestants and the Catholics, and the Puritans, who were Calvinists, decided they wanted to get away from it all. For 10 years, they lived in Holland, and in fact, they did very well. Jobs were plentiful because Holland at that time had just gotten its freedom from Spain and was a free market nation. They welcomed people from all over the world and they welcomed all sorts of religions as well. Unfortunately, the Calvinist Puritans realized after about 10 years that some of their children, they said, were picking up too many Dutch ways. So they decided that they would pick up sticks and move elsewhere. The only thing about it was that they didn't have enough money to travel to the New World. So here's our first lesson in the history of the Pilgrims. They were able to get sponsors, rich people, to sponsor their trip. Indeed. Don't tax the rich, everybody. They were able to get sponsors to come to the New World. Originally, they were going to have two ships. One of the ships was not seaworthy, so they all piled into the Mayflower and they set sail in the fall of 1620. They landed not where they expected to land, which was going to be Virginia, but instead on the coast of Massachusetts, where they established Plymouth Plantation in 1620. They also established something that was a big mistake. They established communal property, and that led to terrible consequences. In fact, we can refer to Governor William Bradford's notes as to why they celebrated the first Thanksgiving and what happened when they established their first political system, communal property. The experience that was had in this common course and condition, tried sundry years, and that amongst godly and sober men may well evince the vanity of that conceit of Plato's and other ancients applauded by some of later times. That the taking away of property and bringing in community into a commonwealth would make them happy and flourishing as if they were wiser than God. For this community, so far as it was, was found to breed much confusion and discontent and retard much employment that would have been to their benefit and comfort." End quote. And that's just the start. Here's more of the lesson in William Bradford's own words. For the young men that were most able and fit for labor and service did repine that they should spend their time and strength to work for other men's wives and children without any recompense. The strong or man of parts had no more in division of victuals and clothes than he that was weak and not able to do a quarter the other could. This was thought injustice the aged and graver men to be ranked and equalized in labors and victuals, clothes, etc., with the meager and younger sort, thought it some indignity and disrespect unto them. And for the feminists out there, William Bradford has some information for you on Thanksgiving. And for men's wives to be commanded to do service for other men as dressing their meat, washing their clothes, etc., they deemed it a kind of slavery. Neither could many husbands well brook it, upon the point all being to have alike and all to do alike, they thought themselves in the like condition, and one as good as another. 
And so, if it did not cut off those relations that God had set amongst men, yet it did at least much diminish and take off the mutual respects that should be preserved amongst men, and would have been worse if they had been men of another condition. Let none object this in men's corruption, and nothing to the course itself. I answer, seeing all men have this corruption in them, God in His wisdom saw another course fitter for them. And that course, ladies and gentlemen, was the establishment of private property. Indeed, the Plymouth Plantation saw starvation, sloth, and anger because they established communal property. But, as William Bradford notes, they found another way. So they began to think how they might raise as much corn as they could and obtain a better crop than they had done, that they might not still thus languish in misery. At length, after much debate of things, the governor, with advice of the chiefest among them, gave way that they should set corn every man for his own particular, and in that regard trust to themselves, in all other things, to go on in the general way as before. And so assign to every family a parcel of land according to the proportion of their number for that end, only for present use, but made no division for inheritance, and ranged all boys and youth under some family. This had very good success, for it made all hands very industrious, so as much more corn was planted than otherwise would have been by any means the governor or any other could use, and saved them a great deal of trouble, and gave far better content. The women now went willingly into the field, and took their little ones with them to set corn, which before would alleged weakness and inability, whom to have compelled would have been thought great tyranny and oppression. Enough said. The first Thanksgiving was put together by the pilgrims as a celebration to thank God for getting them away from collectivism. They were able to prosper. Governor Bradford notes that they had all sorts of wonderful results. Much more corn, much more food, and they were able to trade. The surplus that the pilgrims were able to gain because of their private property establishment is what led to them being able to invite the Indians to sit down to the first Thanksgiving. That's the lesson of Thanksgiving. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and happy Thanksgiving. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.